Welcome back and welcome back also to our parents panel today. And Tricia, we'll go straight to you. I want to hear from each of you some ideas for stress busters for the kids. You've got quite a few resources there with you from Skylight. I do. Um, one of the things that we've developed some years ago are some workbooks that kids work through at their own pace with a parent if they're younger. This is one, something has happened. Um, this is used for three to six year olds and it's a way where kids can draw or um, scribble <laughs> or colour in what's, what it is that's happened. Uh, young children find it hard to find the words to describe their fears and, and what's going on because they don't have the language. Um, these have been used extensively in, in Australia after the bushfires, for example. And they're actually New Zealand designed. They're New Zealand they? resources, yes. Um, this is the one when tough stuff has I'm happened. Hold this up that's for seven to 12 year olds. And uh, we have another one uh, recently brought out a magazine, uh, you know, a real teen magazine called The Journey Through for Teenagers. But we've got all sorts of little booklets and things like what he worried about with little strategies of things to do. But um, just thinking about stress busters, don't overlook the really obvious things like taking the kids for a walk, letting them run around and, and use their um, physical bodies. They get very tense, you know, they're hyper vigilant, as we've talked about already this morning. And um, just getting them in the out outdoors and letting them relax um, takes them away from things as long as they're kept safe, wherever safe. it is that they are, and supervised. Um, you know, for the older ones going for a run, playing sport, whatever it is, can make a really big difference. And actually, as the adult, you're often doing it too, and you end up feeling mm. better as well. Right, because your physical mm. activity, as our mayoral candidates have said That's all right. morning, very important. Uh, Pablo and Chris, um, any ideas from, for you that you'd like to share with yeah. our viewers? Well, we've been talking with children, we've been talking with parents, and of course the stress is actually caused by the perception of lack of safety, not necessarily the lack of safety itself. And so we've, we've talked with children who have felt very reassured if they know they have a safety plan, for example, mm. if they know what to do. And so um, one little girl was wearing her cycle helmet because it made her feel safe. So if she feels safer, then clearly her stress levels are going to be lower. So talk with your kids, work through with them what will happen if, let them suggest ideas that are going to make them feel safer. And that will be a real way of, of them contributing to the solution as well. And they'll feel less stressed because they feel that they have a safety plan. Even just the torch by the bed is a good idea at the moment. Mm. It's like a perception mm. thing, isn't it, Pablo? One um, that's quite helpful for us is that, uh, remember I talked a little bit before about the physiological aspects yes. of, uh, or reactions to stress. Breathing is really important, and we can't say enough about breathing. As you know from the yoga experience, that breathing is, it helps you settle down and relax. And so, look, if you get down on the ground with mum, mum and little one, come on the ground, laying on their backs, get a teddy bear each, put it on your tummy, and start the breathing exercises and use, and seeing if you can lift the, the, the teddy up on, and, and move it up using breathing mm. through your nose, holding it and breathing out through your mouth. Cycle about a minute, um, and that will, regulate the breathing again, get that CO2 and oxygen level back into balance and that does wonders for, for managing distress. Mm. Let's talk about the longer term effects of the earthquake as well because you know this is very immediate, it's a week, and a, a week and a half ago now. Is this something that some people might bottle up and you might see later? It's not uncommon for children to be so affected by the distress of the adults who they love mm. that they uh, their focus is uh, on what can I do to make things easier for mum and dad and mm. grandma or whoever else is living with them. Um, not all, every child's different of course, and, uh, but it's not uncommon. So sometimes children's reactions can be delayed and we've talked about the physiological things that go on in our bodies. Sometimes when that wears off, the reactions kick in. So reactions can, uh, as I'm sure the guys will mm. confirm, can happen mm. weeks and months later. Uh, so it's really watching your child, observing them, talking with them, listening to them and, mm. and just watching if there's any changes in behaviour that is concerning or there might be something they're trying to say but they don't know quite mm. how to put the words to it. So it's just knowing that you're in for the long haul really is to recover. A, mm -hmm. Is there a most vulnerable age for a child particularly, like a teenager's more vulnerable or, a, you know, tweens? I think everybody is an individual and everybody responds differently. Um, I think, you know, particularly with younger children, they may feel safer if they are with their parents. Um, and if their parents feel calm and relaxed and the children are going to feel less stressed, maybe other people will read more into the situation. But it's very much more about the meaning of the event rather than mm. the event itself. And every individual is going to interpret that differently. And on top of that, um, in terms of development, let's just look at adolescence. Uh, it's a time when 
you know, there's this contrast between ha moving from a safe environment out to the, into the social world and exploring and understanding who, how you fit and who you are. And um, so they, it's really appropriate that adolescents somehow minim or lessen their reliance on, on parents to support them and start connecting with peers in terms of support. Okay. So that's really important for them to be able to be with peers, be supported by peers, allow that, encourage that in healthy ways, uh, and also be there as mum and dad for when they're ready to come home and, and spend time with the family as well. So, and like if people are watching today, where's the, where's the, where should their first port of call be if they really are concerned about their kids? I think the guys from Christchurch would be best to answer that since they're on the spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, talking with other parents is a good idea, talking with teachers, mm. some schools have school counsellors, mm. and your GP. I mean, those are the first ports of call, as they are always, and those are the people who will best know the family and the circumstances. So I think the important thing to do is, if you feel worried, then sure, talk with somebody who can help, mm. but also talking with other people just to gain some reassurance that what you're observing is normal. Other people are feeling the same way and are seeing the same behaviours in their children. Mm. And the vast majority of children are going to recover from this through a natural healing process it's, it mm. takes time and as parents there are things we can do to accelerate that process um, but you know clearly as parents if we are worried then that's exactly why Save the Children is offering these workshops either through schools through community groups or even groups of individuals who want to get together just to allow that dialogue to allow children and parents to express their feelings to each other and to share ideas share thoughts and share feelings that actually this is normal we're going to get through it and these are things we can do to help each other well I think you know Christchurch seems to have the most uh, Canterbury I should um, correct myself seems to have the most amazing community spirit at, at the moment it's mm, so wonderful for yes. all of the country to see thank you so much uh, for taking time out I know you're all very busy today and we really appreciate some of the great ideas you've given us thanks a lot thank you, thank you.